Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> no. I feel dumb. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> You're already recording. <laughs> this is for the blooper reel. No. <laughs> you can go your own way. Go your own way. Well, hey guys, welcome back to Juan, our coffee talk. Start again. I messed up on the very first clip. <laughs> got a booger in my nose. You got a booger? No. Okay. <laughs> Don't record that. Okay. <clears throat> well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. And this is, my name is Juan and this is Beth. If this is your first time here joining us uh, this series of videos is called coffee talk and in today's coffee talk we are going to be talking about homeschooling so miss Beth this is your very first time with us on the coffee talk series it is and I'm a little uncomfortable about it so if I sound stupid look dumb well that'd be why yeah she gets a little nervous when you put a camera in front of her uh, most of the time she starts laughing and she can't take it serious. <laughs> so hopefully um, we can get through this whole video without too many start and stops and editing. We'll see. So yes, but promises. we're here at McDonald's drinking our coffee because we live in a small town and the only coffee shop that we have in this town closes at like noon. one o yeah, or noon or <laughs> one o'clock, something like that. So the next place, best place to get coffee is here at McDonald's. So I got the new cold brew coffee that um, that McDonald's is offering. What'd you get? You know, I don't know. Let me look at my receipt. You don't know what you ordered? I don't remember. Oh, I got the iced non-fat mocha. Iced mocha, okay. Medium. Very good. Thank All right. You. So yes, in today's uh, coffee talk, we're going to talk about homeschooling. We are a homeschool family. Uh, we've been doing it for... We are starting year five. Starting year five, getting Scary. ready to get into the, our next year of homeschooling. And yeah, we actually um, pulled our kids out after they had completed first and second grade. And so we started for third and or second and third grade with our kids and now we are starting sixth and seventh we have yeah. middle schoolers yeah we have middle schoolers now so now this video here we're, we are not homeschool professionals by any means <laughs> and uh, no. we don't I mean, we're just kind of doing what we feel is right and so we're not professionals we're not experts uh, so this is just our opinion of our through our experience through the years of homeschooling so hopefully some of you guys that are maybe thinking about homeschooling can pick up some tips and tricks here or if um, you are doing homeschool currently uh, you can relate to some of the topics that we're going to talk about when it comes to the pros and cons and then uh, Beth is going to give you some tips through the years that we have picked up and learned through working in the trenches of doing this homeschooling thing so uh, first we'll start off with the pros and the cons and uh, we'll start off with the, the good things, the pros, the pros of homeschooling, okay? And the number one pro for homeschooling, in my opinion, is the freedom. Freedom. Yes, we love the freedom that we have. That, I mean, if, we're able, if we need to take a day off, we can do that. Um, we have found that we usually start a little bit after public school starts. They usually start here in our area, like the last, maybe the third week in August. We tend to start the week after Labor, or the Tuesday after Labor Day. So we start about three weeks after everybody else. But one nice thing is that we normally take about three weeks at Christmas time versus just the two weeks that they get with, with public school. And the other great thing about uh, the freedom of homeschooling is like, you know, sicknesses. If a kid gets sick, you know, we don't have to call in and have a doctor's excuse or anything like that. Uh, so we can always take, you know, a couple days off until the, our kid gets better. 
Um, another thing is family vacations. Sometimes we can plan our family vacations in the seasons when people are already back to school, right. uh, like October or fall or something like that, where it's less crowded in the vacation territories that we um, attend. Right. But we actually went to Disney World three years ago with our kids, and we went in October, and it was fantastic. It wasn't overly crazy crowded, and it was just nice because the majority of people are you know, back to their normal routines and back in school. Yes, and then uh, the other thing is doctor's appointments, because I know sometimes when it comes to doctor's appointments, you got to pull the kid out of school, and so uh, that flexibility of being able to uh, just take them whenever that time comes is, uh, is gold to us. So flexibility is the best pro when it comes to homeschooling. All right, so tip number two or uh, pro number two would be no pressure. Uh, now, sometimes when people look back on their school years, uh, we have... You know, some people have positive memories, some people have negative memories and, and relate school as some of the worst years of their lives. Um, but there's no pressure when it comes to the homeschooling routine. Um, we don't have to worry about you know, bullying uh, being something that we have to face in homeschooling unless it's our For son, me. son yeah, mom <laughs> bullying the kids. Uh, but I know that from my experience of going to school, uh, being a, a kid that was white and Mexican, um, there was bullying and, uh, you know, I got picked on for that kind of stuff. So uh, my kids won't have to face that. And that's, uh, that's a big benefit. Uh, peer pressure. Peer pressure is a huge thing. Um, with them being in homeschooling, you know, their peers are right here in our family. So there's no peer pressure involved from you know older kids that will kind of force them into doing other things that you know we don't want them to do. So yeah, so removing them from the public school system it stabilizes that and we can have a little bit more control of having no pressure when it comes to that kind of stuff. So all right, so pro tip number 3 would be effective learning and if you want to kind of take the lead on this one. Yeah, so Obviously, when your kids are in a public school or private school, however you do it, classroom, there's, you know, between 22 and maybe 28 kids in there, whereas right now, I just have our two kids in the class. So if my son, which it's always my son, needs extra attention with math, he is not a fan of math, either am I, but um, I can give him that extra attention, whereas a teacher in a regular school classroom, they have... 27 kids that they're trying to teach and they can't really cater and focus just on that one child so effective learning I think is is a good tool because um, when I need to spend a little extra time with my son on math or my daughter with reading and spelling I can send the other one to do something else at that time and, and kind of focus more on what that child is struggling with and every kid has different strengths and weaknesses and so you know with our particular situation our son is a very good reader or our daughter is not our daughter is very good at math and our son isn't so we can focus on those areas where they have weaknesses and kind of just you know put a little more focus on that also with effective learning uh, the different styles of teaching so like a, you know a teacher has to teach a whole classroom full of students that have like you know 20 25 kids in a, in a classroom so her style of teaching is going to be different than just teaching one or two individuals so that effective learning I think is a huge pro with homeschooling okay so now we're going to talk about the three different cons that come with homeschooling because there's pros and cons in every situation and um, same goes with homeschooling so one of the cons be time and I will let Beth explain what we mean by time well, it's kind of a pro and con because it's a pro because you can cater to your own time frame. But the con, which I guess it just depends on your lifestyle. When my kids were in public school, I kind of had, um, you know, seven or to nine hours of free time during the day for myself. That's when I'd go grocery shopping and clean the house and whatever. Well, now when you're homeschooling, you're with your kids 24 hours a day so sometimes that can be a con because you might just need a break you need some alone time so um, I don't I wouldn't necessarily say that that's a con 
but sometimes you just have to make time for yourself because your time is committed to your to your kids. And with Beth here, she is here at home with the kids all the time uh, versus myself being the main breadwinner. Um, I do have a job that I go to um, and she's with them all the time. So, Except for right now, we escaped. We did escape to <laughs> shoot this video here at McDonald's. Uh, sometimes our escape time is going grocery shopping together. And yeah. <laughs> We're living the dream. <laughs> So another con to homeschooling would be uh, missing out. The kids possibly missing out on some of those traditions that many people have grown with uh, going to school. So some of those traditions could be like prom, uh, maybe sports, um, that going to school for the very first day and meeting your friend there and having that memory. So those are some of the cons is missing out on those particular things. But I think that's a pretty good I don't know. I think it's a good sacrifice for what we it get. Is. And a lot of people who look down on us for homeschooling, they're like, how do your kids get any socialization? Well, that has never been a concern for us because we're both pretty social people. Also, we work in the church and ministry full time. So our kids are always around other kids. They're there Sunday mornings. They're with their peers Wednesday nights. And then we also join co-ops throughout the year. So there are other, I don't know, co-op is, I mean, in case you don't know, is a group in your area who will offer classes. So it's kind of like a school setting, but it may be just one day a week for 12 weeks or six weeks or however it is um, for two to four hours or something. So um, we have signed up for co-ops in the past and of course it's the same thing when they go to school they're pretty nervous like oh, who are you going to meet but by two three weeks into co-op they usually have found a buddy that they kind of you know will pal around with the rest of the time during their co-op so social socialization everybody like fears that like oh your kids are not going to be socialized they can't play sports they can't do this but that's not true and often your public schools will allow your homeschoolers into their because they're they're enrolled through that public school you have to be enrolled so like our kids can if they want to play basketball or football or whatever they can try out for the team just like any other kid it's just that they're homeschooled and then they play for that team all right, and so the last con that we thought of was uh, money. Now, uh, what we mean by a con on that is being a homeschool family, one parent is usually with the, the kids the whole time, so therefore she cannot work. So Beth doesn't work. We're a one-income family, so sometimes you know money can get a little tight instead of having you know two people that are bringing home a paycheck. So except you, that I do work. You do work. She with does. My baby. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> I work hard, actually. Right. <laughs> but in general, um, yeah, when it comes general. to homeschooling, a lot of times the one, there's always one parent that um, is a main the breadwinner. So I do, to kind of supplement our income, I do babysit. So it's our kids are a little older now, so it's a little bit easier because they're a little more self-sufficient. So I can babysit for other families during the day. and. They'll do, um, I'll do some schoolwork with them. You know, the little kids will do some preschool activities while our kids are working on their homeschool curriculum for that day. So that does kind of help supplement because one income family is, is pretty tough nowadays. So that does help us quite a bit that um, if you're able to do that, that's something you maybe want to look into, but it does make it harder. So just beware. <clears throat> All right, so we'll end this note on, on uh, a quote that Reggie Joyner uh, that has stuck with me through the years of being a youth pastor. I use this quote a lot, but if you want to influence kids' future, you need to influence their faith, their choices, and their relationships. So remember those three things, and if you want to influence your kids' future, think on those three things and influence those three things, and I think you'll be able to steer them down the right path and down the right road. So... Okay, well hopefully you guys picked up some tips and tricks uh, with, with this homeschooling coffee talk video. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of our longer uh, coffee talk videos. She's a talker. Yeah, so the more you guys see her in the videos, the more you'll learn that. So.
<laughs> but uh, don't be afraid to comment down below with any kind of questions. Um, we always check out the comments and uh, we like to engage with our audience. But um, thank you guys for watching this and until the next video, be creative. Be creative. <laughs> <laughs>